how to connect to the greatest wealth yes everybody is interested in that one <laughs> there is one thing that everybody forget to connect and it is just right in front of you right inside you right with you because you went unconscious you were not been able to connect it that unconscious state was you have been distracted by the massive sound waves from outside the high tech music the television the mobiles and unending money in your hand which you wanted to always spend it <laughs> Hence, you have not been able to connect it. And look, I will uh, show you the path. Jose Rizal, born on 19 June 1861 in Colombo in Philippines. Died on 30 December 1896 in Manila in Philippines. Was a Filipino nationalist writer and polymath. Active at the end of the Spanish colonial period of the Philippines. He is considered the national hero of the Philippines. Jose Rizal said... He who does not know how to look back at where he came from will never get to his destination. <laughs> that was the truth. I was a product of the St. Joseph's. So when I was in the ninth standard high school, we call it, Father Cheruvikil was there. He used to tell, tell us, Whenever your sister is going, always make sure a small baby or small boy, whether a young brother or anybody, should go with her. So that the other men who are sitting on the streets to just joke or comment or disturb gets a little scared. Even a small, but the small is very important. Every one drop makes a big ocean. That's small. Then I was thinking, yes, that is so truth. Yes, whenever we see a girl going with a small boy, we think twice to come in those days. Coming back to uh, before I entered into St. Joseph's, that is for the high school, that is for the fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was in St. Joseph's. Before that, when we came down from Malaysia, <laughs> We were put in a convent called Holy Angels Convent, where I did my nursery, first standard, second standard, third and fourth. It's a co-ed school where girls and boys study together. So one day, I I was given a coin by my mother or my auntie. I do not know, but I know when my new aunties and uncles visit us, they used to push in a small money into our hand. <coughs> so that day in the school, after the lunch, I rushed up to the gate. And there was a gate man, watchman. We don't call him watchman, gate man or something like that. He won't allow the small kids to go out. Because the next outside the gate, there are many shops selling chocolates and other things. So I was waiting there to just slip outside to go and buy the chocolate. Suddenly, one I was in second standard. So one fourth standard boy. So we know everybody in the school from nursery to fourth standard, who all are there. But we might not be knowing their name. One fourth standard boy came and said, why are you standing here? I'll go and complain to the your uh, class teacher. So I said, I, I have a small coin. I want to buy chocolate. He said, give that coin to me. I will go and buy for you. You are not supposed to go out. You see, when teacher comes to know, she'll beat you up. So I gave the coin to the boy. And was waiting near the gate. First bell already went. And I started shivering. Now I have to rush up to the class. The second bell goes. And the final bell, the teacher will scold and beat me up. I have to get back. But where is my money? Where is that boy? Suddenly I saw the boy coming full speed running. He pushed me and ran. I started running behind. But my second son, his fourth son is very far. What did I did? I just cried. Can I go and tell the teacher that this boy took the money and did not give me back? Because we are not first of all not supposed to bring the money. Not going to go. Connecting back. Why I am trying to tell is the connecting back. I went with my Japanese student you know, who was a police officer's daughter. So she wanted to take me out. So she said, where, uh, Sensei, where do you want to go? So we said, we go to the em Emperor's Palace. So we went there. But evening around six o'clock, she we were still sitting in the park and talking. And she said, shall we go? I said, it's not very dark. Let, well, let us. 
So it was some more time. Then she immediately went to the nearest uh, telephone booth. That time we didn't have the mobile. And she made a call and she came back. I said, to whom did you call? She said, I called my mom. Why? I asked. She said, uh, I have to inform my mom. I told my mom that I am going to sit with Rocky son till six o'clock. Now it's past six. So I had to inform her. Say, so immediately I thought, oh, she's always connected to the roots. Immediately I said, let's, let's go. <laughs> the naughtiness immediately changed to fear. Fear changed to protection and protection changed to helping her out. Always connect back. He who does not know how to look back and where he came from will never get to his destination like the kite flying. Your roots are the people who are pulling you from down and you fly, you soar high up into the sky. You see the whole world universe and suddenly you start spitting from the top. You spit from the top. This kite get disconnected and get you fall in somebody else's terrace. That was the fear. That was the poverty all around. That you forget to love your family. You you are always been taught love your friends, not your family. Your friends are the best. Uh, they love. This was a tricky business played by the rulers, by the uh, dangerous politicians who wanted to make you a slave. If there are tyrants, there are slaves. Without slaves, how will a, a, a dictator stay there? Find out whether you are a slave who got disconnected from your family. The wealth, the greatest wealth is your family. Wherever you go, disconnect, uh, come back and sit with the family, embrace the family, take baths together. Have not just sitting, take baths together, scrub together, eat food together, laugh together. Forget, do not discuss anything in the outside world for some time. After all this happiness and only then, if they are really serious, then you can connect your office work with your wife, with your family members. And once you know that wealth, you can never disconnect from the wealth. I was told by my many political leaders, why are you sitting morning to night? You do not know the external world, Guruji. You are always inside. You are always. How do you know the external world? But by sitting inside with my children, the vast ocean of many varieties of religious children, caste, communities, rich, middle class, poor, the handicapped. Wow! It was a vast world. I consider that as family, and I knew. I have seen the whole world. That was the strength. That was the power. If you understood that wealth of your family without disconnecting a single day that what Sidhu told, every day make a call. Every time, morning, afternoon, evening, night, I used to call my sister and that helped me to get married and settle as a beautiful banker. It's possible. He's got cerebral palsy and his speech was dragging. But in spite of that, he was able to settle beautiful because he told me, connect. Once you know to connect your family, your joint family automatically melts with you and you have the family tree. That is the greatest world. What else is the greatest world? All the greatest worlds. Even Ramana Maharshi said, ask who am I? Ask who am I? And people forget how do I? Jesus Christ knock and the door should be open. If, um, Vivekananda said, uh, rise, wake, rise. Everything is from inside your telly. Awake, arise. That means look into you, connect to your foundation. And Bob Marley came as a materialistic man in the world and he provoked the black. And you see, many, many have gone into the White House. He said, Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. Please do that. That was the greatest wealth. Connect, connect, connect. First, your family. They are the first friends. If you do not know that they are your best friends, you cannot have an external friend because the external friend can always be a hyena, a fox.